Hi there and welcome to this tutorial going over the color modes and various grading tools available in Assimilate LifeLux. We are in the player and have the LUT based color mode selected. So let's get right to it. In the primary menu within the LUT grade section we have access to the lift gamma gain color wheels as well as pre and post saturation sliders. The pre saturation slider affects saturation before lift gamma gain and the post saturation slider after. In most scenarios you want to use the post saturation slider. However, the pre saturation slider can be helpful when for instance creating color casts or mono color grades by taking out the saturation up front and then dialing in for example a sepia tone. The color wheels have indicators as to whether they have been turned clock or counterclockwise. The color blocks around them make it easier in difficult lighting situations to steer the color ball towards a certain color. In dark environments the color wheels can be dimmed to be easier on the eyes. By clicking the little buttons at the bottom we can reset each color wheel. If we hold down shift or control while pressing them we can reset either one, ball or ring. By the way if you're not using a panel you can just hold down J, K or L in order to highlight any of the color wheels. And then click and drag across the screen to move the corresponding color ball or use the mouse wheel to move the ring. The numeric menu also holds lift, gamma, gain and the two saturation parameters but in the form of number sliders. Also we can find a whole lot more parameters like offset and pregain but also Kelvin and tint in here. The S-curve parameter is a nice way to increase contrast without letting the image clip. When dialing in a new value for any of these parameters you click and then circle around the parameter just like turning an encoder on your panel. A very convenient way to tweak numeric parameters. If you hold down shift the speed in which the numbers change will be slower. Clicking any of the parameters will pop up the calculator and you can punch in the numbers right away. Any parameter that is changed will light up in blue, same as the menu tiles on the left. This makes it easy to spot which parameters have been changed. If required we can also load a CDL in here which will tweak the corresponding parameters accordingly. The curves menu provides us with all the curves you would expect from a professional color grading application. Pure luminance, but also for each color channel and also hue versus hue or hue versus saturation curves. If we enable the pick function we can just click and drag right on the image to modify the curve and, like in this case, desaturate the red colors. Behind the vectors menu we have a fully blown color remapper which provides us with two grids, hue versus set and hue versus luminance. The hue versus set grid allows me to grab green for instance down here and desaturate it by pulling it towards the middle of the grid. Alternatively I can also shift green towards yellow. The hue versus luminance grid allows us to darken certain color tones. Let me use the pick function here to demonstrate. On to the LUT menu. Apart from the soft clipping parameters down here which affect the very dark and very bright areas of the image, the LUT menu features our so-called LUT cycler. Let me show you what this means. For that I'm gonna load a lookup table. As you can see there are two more LUTs in that same folder. Now using the arrow buttons here I can quickly cycle through all the LUTs in this folder. The drop down next to it lets me directly select one of the LUTs. In case I want to place a new LUT into the folder while LifeLux is running, I can refresh the list here with this button. Now these were the tools we can use when working LUT based. Let's switch to the CDL color mode. As you can see, the label here now changed from LUT grade to CDL grade. Since the CDL only contains a very rudimentary set of parameters, the grading toolset is quite limited. Even though we now have selected the CDL toolset, 
we are still able to load a lot on top of our CDL grade. However, the soft clipping functions are now greyed out. Also, the curves and vector menus are gone, since they cannot be translated into CDL parameters. Going to the numeric menu, we are now only seeing the CDL parameters for offset, power, slope and saturation. Same in the color menu. However, there is a new drop-down in there which lets us choose whether we want to work with the CDL wheels or rather use CDL sliders. That being said, I recommend to use lift gamma gain wheels because they are far more convenient to grade. And of course, they will still produce genuine CDL values in the background. Let's switch back to the LUT toolset and move on to the FX tools. First, we have so-called texture effects. The grain effect lets us choose the blend mode and also various other parameters like strength and size of the grain. Similar for the highlight bloom and the diffusion effect. The vignette can be set up with opacity, softness and scaling. If we unlock the X and Y scaling parameters, we can dial them in separately and change the aspect of the vignette. On to the Kia. For this, let's switch to our C cam. This is a reference clip I loaded, but let's pretend this is a live SDI signal showing a green screen setup. Replacing the green screen with a background of our choice only takes us two clicks. Done. Now looking at the alpha channel, I think we should refine the matte a little. We can easily do this by enabling the pick and C plus option to sample more of the green background. Perfect. We can get rid of the green edge around the talent by expanding our matte a little. Also, we can scale, position and even blur the background. And of course, we're still able to grade the talent in the foreground using the grading tools. On a side note, I'm doing all of this on a MacBook Pro from 2012. LiveLook's hardware requirements are really modest. Now as you can see, the FX tools are available in both the CDL and LUT based color mode. However, they are strictly separated from either one. This is for a reason. Only the grade dialed in in the LUT or CDL grade section will actually travel with the LUT or CDL exported from LiveLooks. Whatever is set up down here in the FX section will not. The FX tools can only be transported with the Assimilate Native Color File format, the .ccr. Whenever you hit the Save Grades button in the Grade Controller, LiveLux will at all times not only save a LUT or CDL depending on your chosen color mode, but also save a CCR with it, which can then be matched and loaded in Assimilate Scratch to be applied to the dailies as well. This is it for a general overview over the color modes and grading tools in LiveLux. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.